This podcast is brought to you by the Alien Soda Company. Your connection to pop culture and paranormal themed merch. Alien Soda Company dot shop for all things out of this world. What's up, fellow searchers? This ain't your average scary movie or paranormal show. This is real life haunting that took place in good old Tennessee back in the early 1800s. Let's talk about it on this episode of the Paranormal Mind Podcast. did me dirty man what do you mean this is a giant glass all right. we all have a big what's glass. up everybody welcome what's up everybody <laughs> welcome <laughs> oh here we go it took him a minute to I find knew. the button and, and and you know i thought we were over this sound effect stuff but what's up everybody welcome to the paranormal mind podcast we really appreciate you joining us on your busy schedule we know that you have other things to do and we really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us so one one thing you have to learn how to do is determine when this podcast is going to come out because you promote shit, and by the time that episode airs, <laughs> that well, everything true, yeah. you've promoted is already passed. That is true, and that's something that I'm learning. But since we do all of these kind together, of together, it's kind of hard to do that because I don't know exactly when this one's probably going to come out. Like June, the middle of June. Well, yeah. you know, I think it's safe that you guys could promote Scarefest. Scarefest. And we can also promote Gettysburg. Yeah, yeah we can so, promote so, Gettysburg. So, first things first, in July, we're going to be at the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. Yeah. And it's the first time that the searchers are appearing together at a, at at a, a convention. At, a, at an event or a convention, yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you want to meet all of us together and, and come hang out with us and have a good time, then join us in Gettysburg. That's July... Do we 13th know? and 14th. I think it's the 14th through the 16th. 16th. Yeah. 14th through the 16th. And it's also for a good cause, charity for a Wounded Warrior Project and stuff like that. So really good cause. So come hang Such out Such a with fun us. event, too. Yeah, there's a lot of really great people that are going to be there, too. So it's going to be a good time. Also, Ray and I will be at Scarefest this year. And that is October... 20th through the 22nd. 20th through the 22nd. And Team Denver from 28 Days Haunted is going to be there. Amy will be there with us. I believe uh, Dave is going to be moderating a panel and Jack stuff. Osborne is Jack Osborne. Jack Osborne will be there. Kane, Kane Castle. I'm Kane just going to send Kane like Hodder. a cardboard cutout of myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josh will be, Josh will be with us in spirit. Uh, you know, we'll just wear shirts that just say. <laughs> Josh Have you wishes seen this he was man? here, or, or Josh this wishes man? he was here, yeah. or find <laughs> find Purvis. Yeah. yeah, find the big perv. That's Have you a, seen that's them? a good merch idea. Find just Purvis. a picture like. We can get like the famous Bigfoot step, but we can just have it be Josh. Yeah, walking the big perv. <laughs> that that is funny. He he does resemble a Bigfoot. I big do. Time. I'm and not even going perv. to try and yeah. say that I don't because I am a lumbering ogre. Yeah, you're <laughs> taller than shit. Man. Right. I am, man. So again, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't listened to previous episodes, we started a new thing, and it was a very bad idea. <laughs> um, on our Patreon, you can buy us a drink for like two bucks, and you. Can can recommend what that drink would be and we'll drink it on air just have a lot of fun and josh is already drunk because it's a we, mistake man we've already it's a recorded mistake. we've already recorded two previous episodes he's already drunk ray and i we're still holding our own we're still doing okay functioning right but we have a drink here called this is the johnny vegas the johnny vegas and what's in it the reason why it's called a johnny vegas is because this is essentially an alcoholic beverage that has an energy drink in it and it's to help you keep going on a night in Vegas when oh, you're crap. supposed to get we're screwed. Yeah, this you're is just a mistake. Supposed, this is this is supposed to perk you up just enough so that you keep going and and to good drink old Vegas. More, right? yeah, 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 
yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. is to encourage you to continue spending money, continue having a good time because well, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Let's hope it works. What happens what in Ray's happens garage. In Ray's garage is not going to stay. It's so, going to be on the internet forever. So the person who recommended this was Jessica Bozeman. Correct. That's so right. Thank you so much for your support or buying us a drink. This is for you. So cheers to you, Jessica. And Lord help us all. Yep. Uh, yeah. Josh has a hole in his lip. Man, that is really good, though. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You suck for being such a great bartender, Ray, because uh, now you're just going to mess us up even listen, more. Listen, so for anybody too. who wants to try and drink along with us, the Johnny Vegas is one part watermelon schnapps, one part tequila. And then for obvious reasons, we chose Ghost. Ghost. Sour watermelon energy. And I, I, you know, that was your recommendation and it was a good one. It is, or, or was it your recommendation? It was. It yeah. was. It was, yeah. So it compliments. Mesh, it meshes perfectly, y'all. Like, seriously, I know we're talking about it where you hear Josh and he's a little sloshed right now. <laughs> but honestly, these drinks that have been, have been recommended. Great. Yeah, yeah, these drinks. That's the that problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> these drinks that y'all have been recommending have been fantastic. So keep it up. And if you want to see the hilarity that ensues Don't encourage them, Shane. Keep it up because, you know, it's a good time. Well, Ray and I can handle ourselves. <laughs> yeah. There's one person that can't. But yeah. it's funny laughing at you. So it's fine. <laughs> Because normally y'all are laughing at me. But see, the me. thing is, is I don't know if that is an indignation on us. Yeah, it's as probably being a bad functioning thing. alcoholics, or if that's like at least he's drunk because he doesn't drink all the time. Right. Apparently, me and you are alcoholics. Well, here's, a, a, here's a problem, dude. Normally, you you just drink a lot of Michelob Ultra. I do, which you wouldn't think would build up a tolerance at all right. because it's like drinking water. But like I've been drinking for a long time. You know, back right. in my music days, whiskey was like my thing. So like I'm not like immune to hard liquor. However, it has been a long time. I'm an older person now. and Well, and there's work and all this other work, stuff. Yeah. Uh, which, which, no, you don't have to explain that away. It's actually a good thing that you <laughs> that you um, get drunk quicker because that means that you're not building yeah, up that tolerance. True. You have other priorities, which, you know, is fine. But it's funny whenever we're doing this podcast because after the second one, you're just completely, oh you're looking God, at man. us cross-eyed and you're everything giggling. is funny. In yeah. my defense, it's been whiskey and whiskey. Well, it's yeah, been whiskey. that's true. And, and now, now it's tequila. It's tequila. So yeah, now whiskey, <laughs> whiskey, tequila. Like, and this is a fruity drink, so Josh is going to drink it in record time. Yeah, like sure. our, our patrons have like like kicked down the door with their no, recommendations. Yeah, they Y'all, got aggra- you guys got really aggressive, really fast. <laughs> yeah, but, but, like, but you we know got what? This. But you know what? I think it's because deep down our Patreon members knows how we are. Yeah. And, and you know what kind of content you're going to get yeah. with the drinks that you give us. So thank you again. Like I said, the drinks have been amazing so far. Really good recommendations. So keep it up. Up, keep yeah. it up. And before we get started diving into the Bell Witch Haunting, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Oh, I love it. Uh, before I get started with that, I want to get this out of the way. The Patreon members, I talked about buying us a drink. Um, but once we hit 100 Patreon members, we're doing a drawing for an all-exclusive paid trip to come investigate with us somewhere in the United States. That means your flight, your food, your lodging, everything, merch, everything is paid for. All you have to do is show up. All you have to do is take the time off of work or just make arrangements to get to that airport. And we got and to you. fly where we are. We, yep. w- we will pick you up. It is going to be a trip just for you. We're doing a drawing once we hit 100 patron members. You have to be subscribed to the $25 a month tier to qualify. And I want to specify that because there was some confusion. It's not the $5, $10 tier. It's got to be the $25. The reason why we're doing that is because this trip is going to be minimum $1,200 to $1,500, probably more than that. Oh, yeah. Um, I would imagine more. Without a doubt. The the $25 a month for the year is $300. So again, you would have to pay for that tier for like four years to make up what we're going to be paying for this trip. So we wanted to make it worthwhile. And, you know, I don't think it's fair if we have it for the $2. No. You know, we yeah. have to have it. There has to be an incentive behind it for the drawing. So please consider joining the $25 a month tier, and uh, we we will do a drawing as soon as we hit 100. And we're only like um, 35 away. 35 yep. away. Yeah, mm-hmm. 35 away. It's, y'all have been rocking it so far, and we really appreciate everybody that's that's already supporting us. But yeah, 35 more, and then we're going to go ahead and do that drawing as soon as we hit 100. Oh, yeah. absolutely, because all three of us are already excited to even do it. Yeah, because so. uh, again, I've said this so many times 
this before, but there's so many people that are like, I wish y'all would come to the West Coast. I right. wish you would come such and such place. Well, if we fly you to us, it's not going to matter anyway. And if you don't have to worry about the financial part of it. Right. All you got to do is take off work and come. That's it. Have a good time. That's it. You come have a good time and we'll work around your schedule too. Yep, so whoever right. wins, let's say that uh, you only have Tuesday through Thursday. We'll make we'll that make, happen. We'll make it work. Yep. If you, you, we will make it happen to where you're not being inconvenienced at your job or any anything else or your life. We will work around your schedule and plan it accordingly. And if we don't have a specific location in mind no, either. No, so, so, so even on, if you said, hey, yeah. I've always wanted to go here, if we can feasibly make that happen, we're doing you it. got it. Yep. We'll do it. Go ahead and sign up so you have the opportunity to win. So let's go ahead and jump right into this episode of the Paranormal Mind podcast. We're talking about some serious stuff here as with documented evidence and real people involved. It's a mystery that has yet to be solved and it's captivated audience for over 200 years now. Let's break it down for you a little bit. The legend of the Bell Witch revolves around the Bell family who moved from North Carolina to Red River, Tennessee in the early 1800s. They settled down, got themselves a big house, and things were going well, but things took a spooky turn after that. It all started with John Bell, the head of the family, who encountered a bizarre creature in his cornfield. So picture this. It's a dog's body with a rabbit's head. Oh, weird. That's nightmarish shit right there. Excuse my language. It's nightmarish. So Bell took a shot at it, but the creature vanished into thin air. From that point on, strange things began happening. The family started hearing creepy noises on their walls, like something or someone was beating on them. And it didn't stop there. And y'all are looking at me glazed. <laughs> no, I, no, I you know, look like you're about I, to fall asleep. I know so much about yeah, this story. So do I. Well, this is good. Which because is good. Once I break it down, yeah. then we can talk There's about so it many things about it. this story. I, like, I actually, I have a book which uh, was given to me by Veronica. I cannot remember her last name. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. It, from Louisiana. From Yep. Yep. Yeah, she's actually, she lives in Tennessee now. She lives not too far from the Bell Witch. Yep. Go ahead, Josh, cave. pick it up. Pick up another and, drink. And uh, she actually Don't mailed, encourage me. <laughs> she mailed me a book that was written by one of the children of John Bell. Now, the book is really good. It's really informative, but it's also very much of the time. Gotcha. If yeah. you can understand that as far as right. so it's not poli- it's not Right, it's not politically correct. Right. Right. But it gotcha. is an excellent book. I highly recommend you. You read it. I think it's Robert Bell. Or yeah, you remember. know the name of the book. I have it in the house. I can. And, I can get it. Yeah, and we'll bring that up in a minute. So we'll dive into what you know mm-hmm. and all of that in just a second. Let's just get through my little write up here. You know, for everybody. Yeah, before before you start that, for everybody that knows Shane, you know, does he, all the write ups for all our this stuff. Bullshit so. up. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It, t- it takes a lot of time. He really talks does. about it for three hours. It, oh, I worked so hard. Hey, it takes a lot of time, especially when I bet if you. Google Bell Witch haunting outlines. <laughs> Not true. I put oh, in man. original work here. Yeah, man. but you know what? It, it's copy tough. pasta. It's tough when it's tough when we do like eight of them. Uh, yeah, right. because it's like trying to source material for. Well, that's eight. why we just gotta wing it, man. Just pick a topic and we'll just roll with it. <laughs> well, but winging it, you gotta have a little. You gotta bit have of a little structure. We'll I get just it. pick a topic it, and we'll just spitball it. But you know, we're yeah, gonna have to see some, how we do. We're gonna we have some spitball. spitball there episodes. are a lot of stories that he brings to the table that me and you don't even know right. about. Me and you actually do know about the bell. Oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. I know so a lot is... about the Bell Witch. The Bell children started experiencing some real nightmare-inducing stuff. They woke up to rats gnawing at their bedposts, their bed covers being ripped off, and pillows being tossed around by an invisible entity. It was like living in a horror movie, but this was their reality. Now, here's where it gets even crazier. This entity, known as the Bell Witch, started developing a voice. It whispered hymns, quoted scripture, and engaged in intelligent conversations. It even pulled off a mind-blowing feet, quoting two sermons preached at the same time, 13 miles apart. News of these supernatural occurrences spread like wildfire, and even Major General Andrew Jackson, the badass who fought the British at New Orleans, took an interest in the Bell Witch. You know, they recently uncovered some journals of his where he actually talks about that, and they were able to cross-ref cross-reference some of his statements to validate some of the journals. So you hear the the liquor coming through quaff quaff I got a loose tongue. (laughs) No, it's it's really hard to talk about the Bell Witch because like another podcast I listened to did like a whole thing on them and so I'm imagining like the voice they made up for the witch. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Uh, Was it last podcast? Oh Oh, man. Good old Henry (laughs) Zabrowski. All right. So Jackson decided to pay the Bell family a visit but 
that things didn't go didn't go <laughs> as, <laughs> as, as, last as, man as, standing as apparently. planned. Yeah, things didn't go as planned. <laughs> Quietly. What the hell? I'm making up words. Uh, (laughs) His entourage got stuck in a muddy creek bed, and a disembodied voice told Jackson that it was the work of the Bell Witch. Later that night, one of Jackson's crew claimed to be a witch tamer with a silver bullet that could take down any evil spirit. Well, let's just say he got a taste of his own medicine when he was attacked by an invisible force. I want to legit meet somebody like that, you know? Yeah, this entity was was not playing around at all. As time went on, John Bell's health declined rapidly. He experienced seizures, twitching, and difficulty swallowing. <laughs> the Bell Witch took a particular... <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> well, I was thinking... Intrusive the, the, thoughts no, over there. No, I was thinking about the difficulty swwallowing and stuff and like how uh, Josh's throat <laughs> the, the, is I making have no noises difficulty swallowing when I drink these yeah. drinks. Yeah. Josh, Josh, Josh has no, no difficulty, difficulty swallowing. swallowing. At all. The big goal. Just stop there. <laughs> Just stop <laughs> there. Loosen that. That's all we need to know. <laughs> all right. Where am I at? Good God. <laughs> all right. So the Bell Witch took a particular interest in tormenting him, constantly berating and mocking him. John Bell, that is. John. Eventually, John Bell passed away, and the entity claimed a responsibility, saying that it had given him a big dose of something that did him in. It's pretty creepy. The story doesn't end there. The Bell Witch made a promise to return in seven years, and it kept its word. When it came back in 1828, it had deep conversations with John Bell's son, John Bell Jr., discussing topics like the origin of life, civilizations, and the need for a spiritual awakening. This time, though, it made some predictions about major events like the Cold War. After three weeks, the Bell Witch bid farewell, promising to visit the most direct descendant of John Bell in 107 years. That year was 1935 and the closest living relative was Dr. Charles Bailey Bell, a neurologist in Nashville. He even wrote a book about the Bell Witch, but did she actually return as as promised? Some say yes, some say no. It's still a mystery. Did he Uh, ever... So he wrote a book about the Bell Witch, but he... So did that book reference anything that he experienced when he... I don't know. I didn't read the book, so I'm not sure. I don't think it's the same book I have. Right. Probably not. So nowadays, people claim that the Bell Witch's presence can still be felt near the old Bell Farm. Mm. There are reports of strange sounds, ghostly figures, and unexplained phenomena. But the cause of these incidents and the true nature of the Bell Witch remain a puzzle. We've got theories, but none of them have held up to scrutiny. So who knows? Maybe one day the Bell Witch will pay your family a visit. Just keep that in the back of your mind as you drift off to sleep tonight. I'd I'd rather not. Pleasant dreams. Yeah, apparently if you go to the Bell Witch Cave, which I don't think it's open to the public right Right, now. It is now. It is is now. Yeah, Yeah. it is now. Yeah, because COVID, because I was actually going to go up there and it's really dependent on the weather too because yeah. you know the cave i guess when it rains water actually oh, goes yeah, into it, it yeah so. so if you take something from the bell cave the bell witch cave she will Tum, harass you yeah so so right so we did this little summary this right. outline what do you know about the bell witch what intrigues so, you most about this story so like okay there's a couple things that one is pretty funny and one is like the one of the theories that i've heard about this it's borderline like hearsay but it's also the uh, plot for the movie An American Haunting which yeah. came out you know yeah. 15 years ago whatever with Donald Sutherland but uh, the theory is that the Bell Witch was actually like a like a, a essential like a DID thing where the daughter of John Bell had like a separate personality yeah. that would attack him because he was supposedly molesting her yep. and that's why the Bell Witch was attacking John Bell because he was molesting his children it's a good movie but it is a very tough it's one very to watch. It's very hearsay. Yeah. Like there's no proof. It's, it's just, just speculation. Speculation. Yeah. yeah. So like you hey, kind of take it with a grain of salt. Josh, you need to catch up a little bit, buddy. Good. Okay. <laughs> Y'all need He's to catch up with me. No, uh, we are. Yeah. Like Ray, I, I, Ray's over half done with his drink, and I'm almost at half. And also, there was apparently uh, I cannot remember the daughter's name, but the daughter that was being tormented to the most by the Bell Witch, other than John Bell, apparently one of her suitors in life decided he was going to put a stop to all this, and uh, he tried to fight the Bell Witch. Yeah, I do remember that. And like he was like swinging and flailing. <laughs> And tried to like literally try to fist fight with the Bell Witch and got hit with a chair and got knocked out. <laughs> I was gonna so like yeah. I was gonna we, say we that about be laughing about this, right? But like I was the, gonna the say fact some, that, the say, fact that like he thought like I'm gonna kick 
go sass. I was going to say something how, about don't about I a know where you're someone. going. Don't. You know who you know who's funny though. Uh, John Tenney made a book yeah. way in the past about like fighting a ghost, and it's the best book. Speaking of John John Tenney, such the a pause on him. Such a freaking amazing guy. He is. Yeah, he's, he a, is. he's a trip, man. John Tenney is such a. You can sit and listen to him literally for hours. Yeah. He's got story after story, and he's so passionate about what he talks about. And if you don't get like, what he if you don't get goosebumps from some of the stories oh, he right. tells and some of the stuff that he's been through, yeah, dude, and, it, you know, like the, it's amazing. Like John Tenney and like the way people have kind of like negatively started feeling about the Warrens and all that. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know, you always got these people come out the woodwork. Uh, well, every, and you know, and there's a lot of there's a lot of stories with the Warrens. Too, it's so that, cliche. You know, it's so cliche to wait until something is very popular. Yep, and then you gotta and then speak shit up, shit all over it. Yeah, and then the fact that you waited that long to shit all over it is more of an indignation on you as a person as it is to them as a person. Yeah, I mean, I'm fortunate to know John Tenney from years, you know, doing events and stuff and having him on them. Fascinating guy. He, you, you talk about people that have you really unique lives. Yeah, he's and, one he, of and them, he's man. such a genuine soul too. He really is. Like I, I see him interact with people, and just the fact that the genuine care that he shows them is yeah. like top notch. I mean, he's such a great guy and he's got a podcast. He does. It's called What's Up Weirdo. Uh, it's the What's Up Weirdo podcast. So go support him. They do amazing work. I listen to their podcast. It's really interesting topics and they just shoot the right. shit like we Because do. unlike other podcasts, we listen to other podcasts. We really we, do. We thoroughly support everybody in this industry. Like, you know, again, uh, we just did an episode not too long ago on uh, Elisa Lamb and not one, which I felt bad about, but not once did we mention the fact that Zach Baggins and that is true. And crew did an investigation, did an investigation at the Cecil Hotel. Yeah, at the Cecil Hotel, which is pretty profound to be right. honest, because, because they, they do not they do, that. do not enjoy that stuff at all. But they let Papa Papa Zach, yeah, they let him in. So Zaddy, yeah, and, Zaddy, and, and, Daddy and, Zach Baggins. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, but but what's up, weirdo podcast? Right. Go support them. They're, they're, it's really good info, and it's Tenny. I mean, yeah. yeah, if you it's don't know John, enough, it's Tenny if, and Jess. I mean, if you don't if you don't care about our podcast at all whatever but like there are other people like John Tenney that deserve oh, to be absolutely. to be recognized respected and appreciated for everything they've brought to the paranormal absolutely. investigating genre to the to everything like John Tenney is on my Mount Rushmore of oh absolutely man of like paranormal investigating and like just the entire industry yeah, yeah. hopefully hopefully you'll y'all you'll get to meet him one day hopefully such a such a really good guy I'm a terrible like, people person though so. yeah but you know <laughs> yeah, you know man he is everything you would expect him to be yeah he really is um if you don't know who John Tenney is listen to the podcast um yeah. he, if anything. Thing. He is one of the best storytellers I've ever known. Yep. I completely agree. I completely agree. But did we ever find out, as far as with the Bell Witch Haunting, did we ever find out who wrote that book? You want to go try to see yeah, that? Yeah, um, I'll go check. Yeah, let's you know, go there's, check a, there's a lot of historic, like, go reference. Go grab the book. Yeah, go yeah. grab the book because there might be a couple of things. There might be a couple yeah. of things that we can talk about. Talk about real quick. Um, I will say that they do have a museum out in Adams, Tennessee now. For the Bell Witch. Right. Um, and one of the, you know, we were talking earlier, one of the things that uh, they have dug up there is they were able to find some journal entries from Andrew Jackson or mm-hmm. somebody that was with Andrew Jackson at the time that went where they went and visited the Bell Witch house. And he actually did uh, his journal entries corroborated a lot of what the uh, journals from the, you know, the family that of the Bell Witch actually experienced. This is one of the more profound found cases out there, especially in American history, which is why the movie is called An American Haunting. It's because it is a very old haunting, but it is well documented in the form of journal entries, which they've managed to cross-reference between uh, multiple people and kind of put together the pieces. Oh, yeah, here's that's the book. Cool. Here's the book. It's called uh, Our Family Trouble, The Story of the Bell Witch of Tennessee. Yeah, that's it. By Richard Williams Bell. Yep, that's right. They So they took his journal entries and mm-hmm. actually made them into a book. Um, it's, a, it's a quick read. I mean, it's only it like, is. It's like less than 100 pages. So. And you, you read it? You oh, read yeah. all of it? Oh, I mean, yeah. It took me like 30 minutes. <laughs> You're looking at me like yeah. th- that would be a feat for <laughs> it me. It would take me it like It would have took you months. 28 days. <laughs> <laughs> at least. <laughs> at least. Oh, um, 
I so, can't, yeah, I can't that say a, anything. That is so, a yeah. very small book. Let yeah, it is. It I mean, and like I said, it's just, I mean, it's a really, it's really interesting though, because it's like journal entries and stuff from Richard Bell. I That's mean, what's really yeah. fascinating about the case is the case and what we know of it today is all really strictly revolving around journal, mm-hmm. journal entries yeah. from the family and then people that actually came to the place to experience those things for themselves. Because like us, there were a lot of pe- adventurers, a lot of people that were into the occult back right. then, and they wanted to see if it was real themselves. And a lot of them have wrote about it and validated what they they experienced. Yeah. And, um, so uh, whenever I think of like a true haunting, I think of the Bellwick. Yeah, oh, me yeah. too. Me too. Yeah. B- because it's, it, one it was of, it's one of those. Yeah, it's one of those very few that hasn't stopped. Yeah, I, I mean, it's still ongoing because the Bell family still runs the Bell Witch Cave. Yep, it's not they like sure it's, do. it's not like it's changed hands. It's still the Bell family. I mean, the right, original yeah. cabin still yep. out there on the property. Um, Which we were planning on. We were planning on going out there. Yeah, I, I remember that. But Veronica of COVID again. And Veronica had was like our connection. Yep. And um, COVID hit. Yeah. Um, and it shut down for obvious reasons. It just kind of never fizzled out. Yeah, it kind of fizzled out. And then they're they're saying now, obviously they're reopening. They're reopening, up. and they have a Bell Witch Festival or like whatever. I don't know if it's considered a festival, but they have like a yeah, a, yeah. a thing every year. They do. Yep. And uh, so I think it's in like September. Okay. You know, but if you are into the paranormal and you can make the drive over to Adams, Tennessee, Adams, Tennessee, you too can go experience the location. And that's about I, what five or six hours. Not, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not, not far not, for us. Not very far at all. Like that's why I said like when when Veronica told us or she told me that she was moving there after it was literally like not very long after we finished the Gothic Jail uh, event that we did in 2019. COVID hit and she moved. She was like she's not very far from there. She's like an hour away or give or take. And uh, cool. So I kept saying, hey, we're gonna come up there and we're gonna do it. Come with us, you know, because she'd yeah. be our our local. Yep. And uh, fucking COVID. Well, we need to look back into that. Thanks a lot. Can, <laughs> COVID. Yeah, thanks a lot, COVID. But yeah, we need to look back into that and see if we can set something up in the future. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So what do y'all think of this story? You think it's a legitimate uh, yeah. haunting? Yeah, I think something was going it's on, absolutely. One of, it's one of, when you think about authentic hauntings. It's one of them. It's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to dispute something that people have written in their because, journals about. Because like, we about. really, we haven't, we haven't tapped into half of the stuff because like, I mean, it was ongoing. I mean, it was. Uh, but the, the mother, like there was a, the mother bell, she was, she had illness and the stuff. The torture, the torture that the bell witch did to John Bell was, I mean, we would be two hours. It was long last. Oh, it was nonstop. And, she, and like I said, it was generational. Right. Like I, I, it reached multiple family she members. She harassed and, John Bell. She harassed his daughter. She harassed So what do you think, what do you think, what What do you think it was? Do you think it It was just the, it was if the there Bell has, If there what has do you ever think? been a authentic haunting and like harassment of a family due to cursing or, you know, right. we always talk about that, like voodoo and who yeah this feels because you know one of the theories is like one of their neighbors who was lost her husband and was supposedly a witch yeah john bell like was aggressive towards her and like stole stuff from her and kind of like cast her out and all that and like she supposedly put a curse on the family so that's what i really wish i i knew is like what was the trigger point right that started this haunting and that's the thing i believe it talks about it in here because it's relentless yeah yeah i think it had to do with with like a land dispute with a neighbor and that's where they accused the neighbor of being a witch and so let, let's let's dig into that just for a second like do you think because we do a lot of cases and stuff do you really think that curses are real like oh, something yeah. something to that regard like that you can unleash an yeah. entity or you there can unleash are, something on on land or there a place. are very few things that i'm like legitimately scared of hoodoo native american curses things of that nature where it's like all encompassing and like yeah. generational and all, i do not i mean you think about we always talk about intent and if there's any way to use your intention in yeah. a worse way, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Well, because I mean, we have here in our area where me and Josh are, we have a woman who was a serial killer here in yeah. Macon. Practiced she, it. She practiced hoodoo and voodoo. I mean, she killed. Yeah. I mean, we her, can... she killed two husbands, a mother in law, her daughter. I mean, she and she, I mean, she was legit. She was like, uh, one of America's first serial killers. Yeah. And she was the first. 
first, you know, one of so, the first so, female serial So do killers. you feel that there's a lot of people that practice like black magic and oh, yeah. doing stuff now? Do you oh, think, yeah. Do you I know think, it. Yeah, without think, a doubt. You think that they are effective or do you think that, that they do things they don't really know what, what they're doing and it kind of unleashes, it I has think, side effects? I think that most people do it as a, I don't know, cliche or yeah. whatever you want to call it where they just think it's cool, but there are people who... I would think that falls really within the Wiccan stuff. Like if you look at like yeah. hoodoo and stuff like that, you know, this is coming from like family members. And so hoodoo was essentially created because, and we live near the coast. This is where slaves were brought in mm-hmm. yep. and like their family actually still live there on the coast. Right. So they all practiced it and it's not all bad, you know? Um, do you think all of us can do it? You think all of us can, I think all can of successfully us have, do it? I think all of us have the ability. Yeah. But I do not think that all of us have the experience, experience and the and history. skill set. And because here's the problem we always, like, even with science and everything else, right? We're the ones that give labels to this stuff. Right. We're the like, one, it's our perception of things. So do you think that we have the capacity and maybe the ability well, to I'll, do these things and influence our environment. And I'll say so. it like this, like com- like asking if we can do hoodoo the way, hoodoo, voodoo, all that, the way natives of yeah. New Orleans and stuff can do. I can make a volcano with vinegar and bacon soda, right. but I can't fucking make a hydrogen collider. I can do science experiments, no problem. It's hard to compete with people when their legacy as a family right. and as ancestors has been that practicing like my that my level of expertise in science compared to scientists yeah who i mean have practiced and who have yeah it's a literal skill this. set it's a literal yeah. belief that they've had but like the, the, the general basics of what Wicca it is and hoodoo and voodoo yeah anybody can learn it but a basic skill set compared to someone who has spent their entire life it's different right? into I mean, into yeah. it. it's ingrained so, in their in who they are yeah. As people. So let me ask you something, and we're going back to the religious aspect again, because of course I grew up in a religious household, right. and you did too, yeah. to a degree. Generational curses. Do you think that has similar? Um, yes. Similar. What if do you, you call if it? If you want them to have, they it. have similarities between this and maybe the Bell Witch haunting. Yeah. Or I other mean, hauntings um, where we're seeing curses and things like that. Do you think? How do you classify the generational curses of like biblical times versus? the more of the present day, the 1800s, more of those type hauntings. How do you classify them? Do you think they're one and the same or do you think that there's well, I think, different I think part things of, with that? I think part of generational curses is always going to be psychosomatic. If your grandparents told you we were cursed and so every bad thing that ever happens to you is because of this curse that was put upon us a thousand years ago or a hundred years ago or whatever, if you stub your toe or you get into an accident... You're going to be like, oh, you're going to attribute it yeah. to that. So, so, but could that be the same thing with the Bell Witch? It could very could well John, be. Could John Bell have said, I'm cursed because of the Bell Witch? I mean, for all we Some know, Some pre-existing all, thing that happened. They right. could have yeah. all been yeah. schizophrenic. Right. So what I'm saying is like, so could could John Bell have been like, man, I'm cursed yeah, by the very Bell well, Witch? Yeah. And then all of his family members, every bad thing that happened they was a result yep. of her. Yeah. I mean, think yeah. about like people. The only have, thing I will say about the Bell Witch that separates it from all of that is because people outside of the Bell family witnessed things that happened and yeah. they saw these With things the family? happen. I mean, there was a priest that came. That's, and, that's the tricky part and the about preacher, this. the preacher came and the Bell witch recited his sermon that he had just preached that past 13 yeah. miles yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. And, and yep. the Bell witch that's, recited it word for word and was like, that's what makes that's this why I know who you are. That's I mean, wow. Yeah. People traveled so, from all over the country. Oh, yeah. To come yeah. see the see them, and yeah. you, you made a really good point about like there's a lot of times where people have like a rough upbringing, right? And it's yeah. and it's easy to use that to yeah. say it's a it, curse of some kind right. to explain it is how very they are easy, today. It's very easy for people who had a really terrible childhood. It is to which, which I've had a really crappy childhood. Yeah, man. like I mean, I've I mean I mean I commend I know you got you know I had pretty great parents, but like I commend both of y'all because of how you've managed to be who y'all are today yeah i mean i'm on my second set of parents you know 
Like, I mean, yeah, it's tough. My, it really is. My biological parents, my biological mother committed suicide when I was five, and my biological father fucking just skedaddled a couple weeks later. So I'm on my second set of parents, which they are, in my mind, my first set of parents. Right. Even though they're not my biological right. parents. But, like, yeah, I mean, like, I grew up without, like, an authentic set of parents because, like, again, my mother was gone. My dad was gone. By the time I was 13, I was already set in my ways. I was destined to be. Right. Uh, I was going to go to prison. I was going to spend the rest of my life in prison for something stupid. My best friend's parents scooped me up and got me, got my shit together. You know, now look at me. I'm doing this podcast and I got a bunch Constantly of kids. Constantly doing things so you're, you didn't so think you'd blessed. do. Right. Yeah. No, so absolutely. It's not a curse. It's a yeah. blessing. Yeah, yeah, but it's really hard to turn that leaf for people. It really is. And I and I acknowledge that, too. You know, I, I see yeah, but, it. In, yeah, and that's the thing is, like, every day you have to make a conscious effort yeah. whether you're going to let the things of the past make you yep. a better person. Mm-hmm. Because, like, every day that I come home from work, I have to make a conscious effort to be a better father than yeah. my father was for me. Yeah, don't let what happened because to you I've seen, determine. Because I've seen both sides of it. I had a father who literally walked out on me as soon as my mother— committed suicide he left me immediately but then i also have a father who was there for me and, right. and still even two days ago texted me and was like hey just want to let you know i love you hope everything's going good and that's awesome that's and it's like i've seen both sides of it both so, sides of the spectrum yeah and, and and i think this is why we all relate to each other well and why a lot of you that are listening relate to us is because, yeah, we've had crappy lives. Like, I had a father that was absent. I had some abuse growing up, some really bad stuff uh, that I talked about, <laughs> actually, in Waverly Hills. Yeah. And thankfully, it resonated with a lot of people, and it really helped a lot of people after the talk. I mean, it was it was life-changing for me because yeah. it was the first time I ever talked about that publicly because you know how it is. Trying to share your story with strangers and that's a, and is you know what's damn crazy near impossible. Is, I mean, we spent a month living together, yep. so we've yep. already been through all. Yeah. We we literally, I mean, you get so fucking bored. You talk about what? Oh, we talk about everything. So, so I, I knew your story. You yeah. knew so a lot like, of mine. We yeah. sat there and ate dinner one night, and like I eat fast as shit right. just because I spent a lot of time in youth detention centers and yeah. getting in a lot of trouble because I was, you know, yeah. a troubled youth or whatever yeah. you want to call it. You eat really slow, and you had an explanation for why you eat slow, and it because of it's the way man. you grew up. And it's it like was, the, it's it's because of my dad, and yeah, it was. It, and it, it's crazy how some things still linger with us, mm-hmm. and, and that's the thing. And I know it kind of gets off. Th- this has gotten off on a tangent, but I think it's important. Some somebody a little needs, bit. Somebody, somebody needs to hear listening. It. Yeah, somebody, somebody listening needs to hear, needs to hear this. Yeah. Like like you think that because we do we travel we do all this stuff um, because we've been on TV because of all right. of this that we have everything together. And this is what searchers the podcast is all about. And searchers in general is we're all on a journey. We're all searching for something. All of you. you You've all been through some difficult times, I'm sure, just like we have. As long as we keep going on the journey, that's what's important. Right. It's not. It's making sure that we we keep going forward and we don't stay behind because of the curses that we have. Exactly. Kind of like yeah. the Bell Witch. Exactly. You know, they, they're stuck. Their whole family was stuck in a curse that they couldn't break away mm-hmm. from. Don't and, let- and it's still they're still dealing with that. Yeah. yeah. And don't make your story the curse for your right. entire family moving forward. Like There's- you said making a conscious yeah. decision to break out of that cycle which is a strength a, it it's is. a strength in and of itself it because is. because I I had abuse like major abuse like a lot of people don't know they see they see me you on TV they see us on YouTube yeah. they see us you don't know the amount of abuse I mean it's so right. it was some really crappy stuff yeah right. there's You've a been thousand, through a lot of there's shit. a thousand reasons why none of us should be oh absolutely right, right here, now absolutely. right here where we are yeah. right now but but the one, the one good decision we made moved us to the next good decision we made. Moved us to. The, I mean, it's about not letting the past define right. you, but being part of you. And right? it's and um, it's incredible to think that like if you if you were to go back in time and and tell the younger version of yourself where you would be today. I mean, how many people would believe themselves? So yeah. Like when you're out there doubting that you can ever be better than you are today, just remember that everybody goes down a path and you can either choose to make a better decision or you can choose to continue to blame everything and you can continue to to fight against everything that you 
that you have right. going on. You know, you can always make a uh, a different decision. Well, that's and, all it really and, takes. And right? anytime you make a wrong decision, I mean, yeah, it could negatively affect your life. But right or wrong can be hardly hard to define sometimes too. That's and it's true. just about that's just true. making something better. Well, when it, it's, it's about learning from those decisions right. that you think you you think you could have made a better decision on learning from that. Like like Ray was talking about how it's amazing how we're here in this place and, and not going deep into it too much, but like there were instances in my life, really bad stuff where I was wanting to take my life. Yeah. Like we talked yeah. about the suicide stuff before. I mean, like almost there. And then the, you know, what brought me back? Some paranormal things happened. Things that I couldn't explain happened right, right in the nick of time that saved me. You know, me and, you know, same I, way. I, I think it's, I think it's really important because there were so many times that I was almost there. But the fact that you're saying that we're all sitting in here together, that is the ultimate blessing. Me having my family, me me having my friends that I've met through all of you and everything else. Here I go, <laughs> knocking stuff over. I know that there's a lot of you out there that are going through the similar stuff right now. You're ready to give up. Yeah. Don't. Don't. Because we are, are living proof right now that if you just make that Absolutely. next step, there there is sunshine after that storm, yeah. after that rain. I, I know we've pivoted a lot from the topic, but I think it's important yeah. on this podcast, on this time, to actually pivot. It's important for you to know that you do have a purpose, and I know right now that it seems like nothing in your life matters, but it does. It absolutely and, does. And and sometimes when you're right in the midst of the storm, all all you're seeing is a storm. You're not seeing the break in the clouds on the other side of that. Right. You're not seeing the sun on the other side of that. There is a break in the clouds. There is the sun on the other side. That's what you need to put in your head when all these thoughts and all these feelings that all, all of these intrusive thoughts that are right. lying to you and right we now. get them today. Right. Yeah, we day. get them all the time. Every day. <laughs> but, but they're lying to you. Yeah. They're lying to you. So we really want you to know, uh, yeah, we cut up and we joke around and we drink and we have a good time on this podcast, but we want y'all to know that you're listening out there. If you're having a hard time, there is hope. There is better times ahead. Please remember that. We're living proof of this. We've had really hard lives individually. I know you've had hard lives too. And I can promise you that that almost anything you're going through that one of us has experienced it. Yep. So yeah. if if yep. you are feeling some type of way and you need to reach out to somebody and you have something going on, feel free. Like I don't, you know, my wife, I deal with mental health problems personally all the time. Yeah, and you talked about the panic stuff yeah, and all that stuff but, too. But you know that weighs a lot on you because it feels like like you have no control over your life. Yeah. Um, and I talk to my wife all the time about suicide and stuff like that. Yeah. And I understand it at a different dynamic because I know that no one looks at suicide as like their first answer. Right. It's repeated, repeated beat downs. Well, and, and to me, it was like, there's my life is just this. Right. And there's nothing beyond that. Yeah. But what I have learned through all that is that is not true. That's true. All of that crap that was being thrown in my head were lies. That's mm-hmm. right. And you are being lied to if you are listening to those thoughts. Even your thoughts are a lie at right. that point. Yep. Yeah. If you have any thoughts that are saying, it's over, I need to end it now, those are lies. So please, I, and I feel like we really just need to say it. This is the time, this is why I'm harping yeah, no, on absolutely. it. Because I feel like somebody out there needs to hear it. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Ray, I know because of what I've heard from you, and I will never say your story until you're ready to say it, but the crap that you've been through and the fact that you're here now is a testament. The fact that I've been through a lot of crap and and I'm still here as a testament. If we can get through the crap in our lives, you can get through it. So anyway, I didn't want to damper no, it too no. much, yeah. but I really feel that y'all need to know that. I yeah. think it goes full circle because yeah. if you look at the case of the Bell Witch, they have been defined by bad shit, by the stuff right. that they yeah. they lived right. with. Right. And, and it and enveloped them things that their father went through, mm-hmm. they all went through. Yep. That's right. But, but don't let that be your case. Do not, you know, do not let the sins of your ancestors and do not let the sins of your father dictate, dictate what you do in life. You can always break the chains. You can always yep. be a better person. Because, I mean, anybody can say, oh, well, you know, my parents shit the bed yep. as far as being parents, so now I'm going to be a terrible But what does parent. that get you? Right. All you have to do is be better than the people that came before you. My The way I live my life is I, when I die, I want to leave this world in a better place than I found it. 
Yeah, that's and, how and, I feel. And I think that's why we have all joined yeah. together because we all have that similar mission. Oh, no, absolutely. And if you and if you leave the world in a slightly better place than you were born into, it's by the t- by the time it's not just about us, right? You know? You're you're leaving a legacy for your children to. It's the only thing you have on with. So it's the only thing you have to give. Really, yep, I agree. Well, look, all this to say, we love you guys. Yep, yep. Um, if you if you have any issues, anything that you need to work through, if you need somebody to talk to, we're not just here for the paranormal stuff. We're not just here for the podcast or for the shows we've been on or anything like that. We're legitimately here on the journey with all of you. That's We say it all the time, but it's the truth. We're all on this journey together, and I really feel like y'all are a part of the family. So yeah. if you need our help, we're here. Yeah. Uh, if you need somebody to talk to or to vent to, we're here. Uh, just always know that and always know that you have us to lean on. If you don't have anybody else in your life, we're here to help. Okay. But thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Paranormal Mind Podcast. And until the next episode, search out. Or searchers out. <laughs> search out. Good Lord. Search the search fuck out. out. Love but you guys. Searches out. We love you guys. See you later. 